Well, I was born during a tornado that was whirling around Columbia, Missouri on the 19th of March, 1925. And um, I keep saying I've been in a whirlwind ever since. When I was little, I was kind of wanting to be a uh, veterinarian to horses. I don't think I had a sense of call to ministry. That really didn't come till after I had been out of college and working a couple years. Partially, I think, because I, uh, my dad was a minister, and early on I had a sense, I didn't understand it, but I had a sense of distrust. So it just wasn't something I wanted to emulate. In her early life, Marg's family moved around quite a bit as her father advanced his career in higher education. When Margaret was four, the family moved from Columbia, Missouri to Chicago, then later to St. Paul, Minnesota, where Margaret's father was the dean of Hamlin College. Later, the family moved to Syracuse, New York, where Margaret's parents eventually divorced and where Margaret's journey to ordained ministry began. When my folks were divorced, I became very angry. And um, in college, I'd said the last thing I'd ever do would be work full-time in the church, which my classmates always uh, reminded me of in the years later. But um, the only way I can explain it is that God was working through the Holy Spirit through a number of people to help guide me in the direction I should go. I had been at the Mayo Clinic as a medical photographer, and Mother would come out and visit, and she tried to get me to go to First Presbyterian Church to a, a group. It turned out to be the Women's Association, and I had, didn't want any part of it. When I went back to Syracuse, she uh, wanted me to go to church. I didn't want to go to church, but one time she wanted me to go over to uh, meet Harry Taylor because uh, she wanted to talk to him about something. So she got me over there. In the process of, of that visit with him, I let my anger out, and he said, good. And I thought, oh, this guy isn't so bad after all, you know. <laughs> he was very open and accepting, and he got me involved at First Church with uh, photography and education and stuff like that. And then East Genesee pastor Herb Schrader needed somebody to help him with uh, Christian Ed. And Herb was chair of candidates committee. So that's how I got hooked up with Herb Schrader and uh, the committee on uh, preparation for ministry or candidates committee. I was interested in what was going on in the church by now and getting kind of involved. First Church had the Scattergood Scholarship for people who might like to explore ministry. So I accepted that scholarship. I went to Union in New York, and while I was there, a whole number of experiences um, um, began to help me focus and say, yeah, this is where I belong. One was reading P.T. Forsyth's book, Prophet for Today. And all of a sudden, the reality of who Christ was hit me. In my class, there were several congregational Christian uh, pastors, women, who were going to be pastors or who were there doing doctorates who were already ordained. That was before the United Church of Christ. There were some um, gals who were on the verge of being ordained in the United Methodist Church. There were several American Baptist women, and they'd been ordained women for a long time. There were five of us Presbyterians who were studying the BD. Then there were a lot more of all of the denominations who were working in conjunction with Columbia University for the master's degree in education. My mentors in Syracuse all said, you you take the BD, because maybe it'll happen. Of course, you couldn't be ordained, but you could be commissioned. My professors were extremely supportive. Dr. Van Dusen, especially the president. I worked at Madison Avenue Presbyterian Church, and of course, uh, George Buttrick 
was there. He was very supportive. I was commissioned on May 30th of 1954, and uh, the presbytery asked me, uh, is there anybody from seminary that you would like to invite? I said, yeah, I'd like to invite Dr. Van Dusen uh, to preach and to Frank Greeb to come up uh, and participate in the service. Well, that's that's fine. Um, um, why don't you get some other choices? Because we're pretty sure you won't get Van Dusen. We've tried to get him here at Cayuga Syracuse for years. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I'm going to try. So after presbytery meeting, I went back to school. It was spring vacation. I went back, and I said, uh, Dr. Van Dusen, I'm going to be commissioned as a commissioned church worker by Cayuga Syracuse Presbytery, and, and uh, I would like for you to... Uh, uh, bring bring the sermon. I'd be glad to if I have the date. Mm-hmm. And I said, May 30th. I have the date. I'll be there. <laughs> oh, that really threw you to Syracuse. <laughs> so he came up, and uh, Frank Grebe came up, and we had the service of commissioning. Mm-hmm. From there, I went down to uh, Tacoma Park in near Washington as a uh, Christian ed director. In her first call as a Christian educator, Margaret lived in the tension of serving God in a world where her authority was constantly under scrutiny. The pastor just uh, could not understand how um, I could be counseling uh, male teachers and not doing some hanky-panky. He was constantly accusing me. At the same time, the movement for the ordination of women was heating up. Great debate going on for several years, uh, especially after uh, Lillian Hurt Alexander got uh, Rochester Presbytery to uh, overture GA. From Washington, Margaret moved to First Presbyterian in Allentown, Pennsylvania. All the while, the debate continued on the ordaining of women until the spring of 1956 when the measure was finally approved. Bill McConaughey wrote me after it was uh, passed in May. Bill wrote me a letter, wouldn't you like to come back to Cayuga Syracuse to be ordained? I then approached Eastwood and and Fitton, who were on the staff, about uh, my ordination and, uh, well... There wasn't much that they could do to object to it. Uh, I don't think they were really for ordination of women. I kind of got that feeling. Um, But they were trying to be supportive as much as they could. And so I did a little political thing. I invited Eastwood to preach and Fitton to read scripture. And the choir at Allentown all volunteered to come up to Syracuse to sing. And then a number of folks from Washington came up to usher. Anyway, that impetus was from the the guys at, at Syracuse. And they did something that I did not know until a few years ago when I bumped into Dick Firth at General Assembly. Margie said, uh, there's something that you don't know about your ordination. And I said, oh. He said, well, you see, when we were sure that the vote was going to pass. There was a group of us we needed to try to convince the guys in the presbytery who were against ordination to um, uh, change their minds and to ordain Marg. Anyway, they said, let's invite them to play golf and let's let them win. And they'll be in a good mood and then we'll start talking about ordaining Marg. And that's sort of how (laughs) they convinced some of those uh, folks. I went up and I was examined. I went several trips to be re-examined by uh, Cayuga Syracuse Presbytery. I had taken most of the ordination exams for commissioning. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I went back up for re-examination and to preach a sermon and so on. There was some... um, some flack against it, but there was a lot of enthusiasm at the church if this was going to uh, come about. On October 24, 1956, Margaret was ordained as a minister of the Word and Sacrament. 
It was um, rather a, a coldish, uh, clammy day. About a week before, it had been up to 81 degrees in Syracuse, but then it got kind of cold and clammish. I went up uh, a couple of days before. Mother said, you know, there's been a lot of phone calls, and uh, Bill McConaughey was getting a few phone calls uh, asking, well, we heard there's going to be an ordination of a, of a woman. Is this the first? And, and McConaughey says, well, I have no idea. Mother had no idea. Um, and uh, they, he said, probably not, because it had been voted on in May, and this was October. Bill called Jean Blake, who was then the stated clerk of the General Assembly, did some research, couldn't find any presbytery having reported ordaining women. And then the next thing I knew, we had a call from Life magazine that Alfred Eisenstadt was going to be coming up and was assigned to cover the ordination. Uh, Mother entertained all of the participants in the apartment, which was the top floor of the McGrath Beauchamp home. Eisenstadt came up and asked Mother, where's the banquet? And she said, what banquet? This is it. (laughs) (laughs) I must admit, I think I was beginning to be in sort of a fog with all of this happening. I really was. Uh, Boom, 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 you know. And so I was just there. It was in Newsweek. It was in Time. It was in Life. One of the things that got quoted a lot was, be sure that you are the shepherd and not the pet lamb. I was in the November 4th issue of Life magazine with uh, Rosalind Russell on the cover. I keep telling him that's me. (laughs) Despite the notoriety, back in Allentown, little had changed. The Sunday after I was ordained, I was to give the benediction. Uh, There was a visiting missionary who was preaching that Sunday, and I was asked to do the benediction, and that was all. That's the only time I was in that pulpit. They never invited me to preach from that pulpit or anywhere. And when communion came, they never let me serve communion in the sanctuary. I was always to pantomime it back in the fellowship hall. And uh, the first meeting that I uh, had of Lehi Presbytery after I was ordained, the uh, moderator in addressing the presbytery, it usually was fathers and brethren, and then he started to say, fathers and, well now what do we say now? Cistern? (laughs) Cistern? Cistern, S-I-S-T-E-R-N. I didn't didn't want to be a hole in the ground, you know. (laughs) What they had not taken advantage of or been recognizing was the fact that there were a good number of women elders who were commissioners Mm -hmm. in the presbytery. So they had had women there. Uh, One of the things that I noticed, though, uh, for a number of years was the reticence of many women to uh, really serve. A number of the Lehigh pastors uh, always got together Uh, once a month to uh, study and read a paper and the wives would go along and they would they were expected to uh, visit you know downstairs or wherever and uh, uh, knit and fix dinner etc and uh, so I was invited to go along but they wouldn't let me go to the discussion they said you can stay with the, the women but then the minister of the little Westminster Presbyterian Church got engaged to the person who was professor of Christian education at Princeton. She was a a really sharp gal, and uh, they asked me to photograph the wedding, and they were married, and then, of course, Dorothy came and lived there, and Dorothy was a commissioned church worker, professional educator, and when we were all invited to go over there, I told her that we never were allowed to. She said, well, we're going to change that. <laughs> and so we ended up, both of us, going to the discussion group. And uh, <laughs> uh, from then on. <laughs>